chapter 9, verse 23. Then he says to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself take up his cross daily and follow me. You may be seated. There was so much in this. Just in this one verse, there's a whole lot. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to try to share some thoughts and some some uh, emotions and some the way the Lord was speaking to me and right. actually he started on Wednesday night All right. and I saw something okay. and when I seen it he been working with me ever since so we're gonna see if we can try to bring some of this out All right. just for a thought Christ's cross and our cross Amen. Christ's cross and our cross. In the beginning of Jesus' ministry, as he was walking along the shores of Galilee, mm -hmm. he saw Simon Peter and his brother Andrew. Yeah, yeah. They were fishing. Mm -hmm. They were out doing what they normally do. And Jesus looked at them and said, follow me. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little bit further on, Jesus began to run cross. I think it was James and John. Yes, yes, yes. They were fishermen also. Yes, yes. Jesus said, come and follow me. Yes. A couple chapters later, or a couple, yeah, a couple chapters later, he runs into a Levite, which is called Matthew, uh -huh. who was sitting at his tax collector's booth. And Jesus says, come and follow me. Yeah. In all these cases, these individuals got up and followed Jesus immediately. Amen. They weren't sure where they were going. Yeah. They weren't sure what they were going to be doing. Yeah. But it had to be something about that voice. Yeah. It had to be something when he says, come and follow me uh -huh. for them to get up and leave behind the work that they were doing to follow Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when God tells us to follow him, we have to heed and hon and, and we're not sure we really want to do it and we're not sure we really want to go. Yeah. But when God says come That's right. and follow me. Mm -hmm. That's right. We should ought to be ready to go and follow him. Right. Now, now I know if a stranger walked up to you and said, come and follow me, you should be like, whoa, wait a minute. I don't know if I want to follow him. But see, he needs us to do a physical thing. And that is he needs us to follow him. Because as we begin to follow him, then he's going to show us some other things. Mm -hmm. And the very first thing he tries to do is make you become a friend. Yes. And fellowship with you. Yes. Uh, I know the praise team was singing a song about uh, a friend in Jesus or something. Friend a friend of God. <laughs> well, if they're singing a song of being a friend of God, then, then, then they're trying to show you something that, that you got to have a relationship with him in order to become a friend. Yeah. So when he tells you to come and follow him, you may be a little bit apprehensive at first. But as you begin to walk with him and you begin to talk with him, you begin to know him, you become a friend of God. Yeah. That even as you become a friend, now he wants to take you a little bit further. Yeah. And he wants you to believe in him. Mm -hmm. He wants you to believe that he is your savior. Yeah. Yeah. He wants you to believe that he came down to this earth just to deliver you and bring you to him. Yeah. See, see, it was interesting that the disciples didn't know he was our savior yet. All right. But we have an opportunity to read the word and, and realize that Christ died on the cross 
for you and for me. And because he died on the cross for you and for me, now we know that he is our savior. We, we learn that as we begin to read and study even more how much he actually loved us. But see, he called us when he called us, he's calling us to make a commitment. Well, Some say, oh Lord, I don't know about making a commitment, but he, he wants to take and, and he wants to bring you into a new territory. <laughs> now think about it for a second. When he, when he called the disciples and told the disciples to follow him, the disciples had to go into a new territory because these were fishermen. These were guys that had been out fishing all their life. These are tax collectors. These are ones that have not walked with Jesus. But now folks begin to walk with Jesus. Now Jesus, I, 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 think about this for a second because Jesus pulls up to an island and, and the man comes running out of the tomb and he had cut himself with rocks and he's bleeding all over the place. Now, now that's a new territory. All right, all right. If I had never seen that before, and I and I see this crazy man running and screaming and hollering and cutting himself, and Jesus got me following him, that's a new territory. Well, but then when you see Jesus take and cast the demon out of him and put the demons and the pigs, and the pigs take off and run and go into the water, that's new territory. Mm -hmm. When they're walking along the road with Jesus and, and they walk to, to a house where the one, the girl had already died. Mm -hmm. That's a new territory. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus go in and he raises up the child. Yes. The disciples had never seen anything like this. This is a new territory. Mm -hmm. Or, or when, when you find that, that he fed the multitudes mm -hmm. with just a couple of pieces of fish, a couple of loaves of bread. All right. This is a new territory. This is something that Jesus is beginning to teach his disciples. Amen. That as he's teaching them, he's like, okay, you know your old way, but now this is a new way. Yes, yes. Well, well, well Pastor, what, what are you trying to get at? Well, now you decided you want to follow Christ. The old ways have passed away. Yes. Now you're walking into a new territory. Well, I never seen anybody fall on the floor and, and squander and, and go back and forth and then we run over and pray for them. Mm -hmm. Some folks would have ran out the door. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Some folks would have called 911 all right. thinking somebody was having a heart attack. Yes. Some folks have never heard anybody standing up saying what God has done for them, how God has delivered them, or how God has gave them a place to live, or how God has healed them. Uh -huh. yeah. This is totally new territory. Yeah. This is something they have never seen before. This is something they only heard about on TV. But, but yet when you walk in the presence of God <laughs> and God begins to operate in you. Oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, and before I leave this, this commitment, you know, some folks don't like the word commitment. Some folks, you know, I come in, I want to follow Jesus. I, I see how he, he came in and, and, and he healed that person. Yeah. And I've been reading the scripture. I pray a little bit, but <laughs> let me go over here first. <laughs> wow. I don't know if I'm ready to just completely follow God as, as he wants me to follow him. Uh, I know there's a club down the street and somebody's giving a party tomorrow night and, and I really want to go to the party. So maybe I'll go to the party first and then I'll follow Jesus. All right. see, see, some of us want to put some, some things in the way or, or that but in the way that we can't truly give our life to Christ. And because we can't truly give our life to Christ, we, we, we always look for a way out. We look for, we look for that but. But when you begin to look for that but, that but is what get you in trouble. God said, I already have your blessings stored up for you. I I already know where I need you to go and where I need you to do, but you keep putting this butt in the way. You want to go and see your father before your father dies, or you want to go and fellowship with some other folks before you do my work. Oh, oh my God. But help us, God. Now, 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 
Now, I'm, I'm, I have to jump around a little bit. I, I was trying to go in order, but, but I got to jump around a little bit. See, see, God has called us to a service. And when he called us to a service, he, he didn't say, I just need you to come and sit in the pews. <laughs> he said, I don't need you to come and just watch the preacher. I don't need you to just come and clap when the praise team say clap. He said, I called you for a reason. Each and every person I called into the ministry because you have a service to do. He, he said, you may not be able to play the organ or the drums like, like these brothers here, but I called you to do something. Right. He said, you may not be able to be an usher on the door like some other folks, but I called you for a reason. Yes, he said, yes. I, I, you may not be able to, to stand up and study and read and teach like somebody else, but I called you. Oh, my God. Right. He said, but what I called you, he said, now, 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 now watch this. He's, he, said, he said, now, I called some of you mm -hmm. to pray for folks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I need an intercessory ministry oh that's just want to come out and work and pray for, for those who are sick, for, for those who are bound, for, for those who are tied down. I, I, I need somebody who, who's faithful enough that would say to themselves that I'm going to fast for three days and as I fast for three days I know that God is going to step in the mix and God is going to begin to heal those people that I'm praying for. See, see, it ain't all about the pastor but it is about the service that God has called you to. Oh, yeah. Oh. Y'all don't, don't hear me. He said, well, well, maybe I can't pray. Well, we need other folks to help clean the church. Now, 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 tell me you can't clean. Uh, I, 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 because some folks can clean better than they can do anything else. So, and, and, and yet you sit back on your on your hands and, and say, well, I, that ain't no service. Well, it, it tells me in the book of 1 Corinthians, I think it is it's one of the gifts is the gifts of helps. And if it's a gift of help, then you're supposed to be helping. Uh, 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 so if one of the help is to help clean the church, then that's what we need to be doing is help cleaning the church. Oh, my God. Y'all don't hear me. See, 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 see. Oh. We, we, we need a, a new members class in this church. But you got to stop and see if you recognize that if we need a new members class in this church, how can you help to do this? If God has placed it on your spirit yeah. to help out in a ministry and you just sit in there, oh my God, then, then, then what are you really telling God? You're telling God, thank you, but. I, I want to, but. I can't, but. But yet, he don't turn around and bless you over and over and over again. Uh, we needed help in the youth church. One Sunday out of the month, go down there and spend some time with the kids. Well, I don't know if I have the intelligence to go down there and spend with the kids. Are you smarter than a five-year-old? <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, because because if you get down there with the kids and the kids begin to tell you what the scriptures say, then you need to get into the scriptures. Amen. That's a way of helping you to learn to be even more of what God is calling you. Yeah. Now, 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 I, 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 I can stay there all day. Because, because there's so much stuff that could be done around this church. And we're talking about moving to another church. And, and yet we still got folks that won't even go and give out a track. We got folks that won't even stand on the corner and invite somebody to church. We got a couple of people that'll go work in the soup kitchen. And, and then we got a couple of people that may go to the shelter. But if you look around, it's the same people that's doing the same things all the time. We have a whole church full of people. Oh, oh hear me y'all don't hear me y'all 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 ain't hearing me because if y'all was hearing me somebody be wanting to do something different than what they've been doing they stepping out into a new territory I, I i i was blessed when i heard somebody said pastor let me be over the fundraising let me help you out with some fundraising because so many folks turn around and say i can't do no fundraising they just ashamed to do some fundraising but when i find somebody that says let me do i'm going to stand back and give them all the help i can give them and let them go forward and do what God has called. Oh my God, y'all y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't hear. Welcome to Grace and Mercy, where the pastor is Donald L. Watson. We would like to invite you to come out and join us for a Sunday school on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. and our worship service at 11 a.m. 
Monday evenings is our intercessory prayer service at 6 p.m. and immediately following at 7 p.m. is our HEAL program. If you're suffering from depression or struggling with some emotional distress, you might want to come out and join us for that HEAL program where we do a lot of soul searching. Wednesday is our Bible study at 7 p.m. and Fridays our Purpose Driven Life class. We ask if you call in advance if you need a ride to any of these events. We will gladly come and provide you transportation. Thank you for watching and God bless. See, see, the book says, the book says that we have to bear, take up our cross daily and follow me. Amen. This cross is very, very important. I'm only to touch on the surface of the cross that we're taking up yes. and following him daily. See, because we look at it as the cross represents we're going to Calvary and we're going to die on, on a hill with Jesus. Amen. And as we look at that, a lot of folks say, well, I ain't ready to die for Jesus. Yeah, but 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 that's what his that's what he was really trying to say. All right, all right. But when you begin to look into the cross a little deeper, well, you look and you see that some of us are carrying some things that we should not be carrying. Amen. He said, "Cast all your cares on said so. me." Said so. Oh my God! But yet, instead of you casting your cares on him, mm -hmm. you decide you want to carry it with you. Yes, yes. So now that you're carrying this cross, and as you're carrying it, it seems like it's getting a little bit heavier. Uh, there's several reasons why it's getting heavier. Let, let's start on the inside first. There, there are some things on the inside of you that God is trying to get out of you. There's, there's some things that's inside of you that God is trying to heal and he's trying to deliver you out of. But, but you continue to hold on to it so it begins to be a burden that you have to carry. And, and the more you carry it, the, the heavier it seems like it's getting. But when you begin to release that and you turn it over to him, then all of a sudden that cross gets a little bit lighter. He said, but you got to carry your cross daily. That even as you're carrying it daily, regardless of what somebody says to you, regardless of somebody's talking about you, regardless of somebody's trying to run you down in the ground, regardless if it seems like all hell's breaking loose, no matter what's going on, I got to stay focused. I got to keep going to where God is calling me. Oh my God. See, see. See, so, so many times folks get lost in their own emotion. Well. So many times that depression will creep right up on you. So many times that worry would creep right up on you. So many times that sickness would creep right up on you. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Let, let, let me stop right there for a second. Okay. When, 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 when you are going through something, uh -huh. the easiest way to get out of it mm -hmm. is to go and bless somebody else. Amen. It's to say, it's to say, if you want to have me bound down with aches, pains, and, and all of that, he said, let me put you on my shoulder because you're my cross. Yeah. And let me go on over here to the hospital oh, because as I go to the hospital, I'm going to go pray for this sister yeah. or this brother. Yeah. You, you have to come along with me. Oh, my God. I, I heard somebody say, if you got off right, it's the twins, author and right, then you need to make them come to church along with you. You can't make them make you sit home because if you sit home, then they going to take over. But when you begin to bring them out, oh my God, you begin to learn how to release the stuff that has you bound. Oh my God. When you look to God and say, God, for you I live and for you I die. Now, now, now you starting to follow him. Now you're looking to see what he has for you. See, 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 you got to get past all that emotional stuff. You got to get past all that stuff that's trying to hold you back. Oh my God, because once you get a hold of it, oh my God. Amen. God came, he, he, he said, let me be your friend. He said, I'm going to put you in a new territory. Even as I put you in a new territory, you got blessed. Uh -huh. Most of y'all that sitting here, I, I got a good hunch, all y'all that sitting here, God bless you one way or another. Amen. 
And because he blessed you one way or another, uh-huh. you, you're, you're in a new territory. Because oh, yeah. you're in a new territory. He said, now you need to learn how to go out and do something. Uh, you right. can't just be sitting down on your hands yeah. because you don't own that chair. Uh-huh. But you need to get up and put your hands to work. Yeah. He, he, said, he said, now that I done did that for you, he said, now you get ready to go up to do some work. You know and I know the devil don't like you doing any work for God. As soon as you put your hands to something, as soon as you begin to do something, you know and I know the devil's going to attack you. You know, oh my God. I've been trying to get over this and over this and over this. I thought I got over it. And here come the devil. All right. That hurt that you had deep down inside, that you had all covered up. Uh-huh. Nobody knows what you've been going through. Can you have smile all the time? Yeah. All of a sudden it becomes a burden. Yeah. All of a sudden it begins to grow in you even yeah. more. God said, I know it's growing in you. He goes, but I want to take that from you. And that as I take that from you, he goes, now you don't have to worry about it no more. He said, you know how I know he took it from you? He said, when I died on the cross, I had you in mind. When I died on the cross, I know what you was going to go through. When I died on the cross, I had all your burdens, all your sins, all your emotions, all upon me when I died on the cross. He said, and I died. I died. That that you can have life. You can have life. And that you can have it more abundantly. But sometimes, oh my God, we begin to listen to the devil. As we begin to listen to the devil, we realize that because the devil is talking, that we forget about what God has done for us. We forget about how we were sick and couldn't get up. We forget about how we had so much drugs on us, we didn't know which way to turn. We forget about how we had no roof over our heads, how we had to sleep on the corner. We forget about how we had no money in our pocket. We forget about what God has brought us from. See, I went from Christ's cross to our cross because we're bearing a cross. And as long as we keep bearing a cross, he said, we're going to do it daily. Oh, my God. He didn't say you only going to do it for a short period of time. That's right. That's right. You know, when I, when I first went into ministry, I, I told somebody, I said, you know, when I got saved, I don't want to come into a church and just sit down. Uh-huh. I want to continue to grow. Because yeah. I had looked around the church and I saw some folks just come in just to sit down, just to be in church. Been in church 40, 50 years and, yeah. and ain't, grown, ain't grown a bit. I said, I, I don't want to go in church just to sit down. I want to go in church to grow. I, I, had, I had a minister friend walk up to me. He says, you know what? He goes, now that you became a minister, I'm going to decrease and I'm going to let you increase. Right. And, and I thought about that thing for a minute. Yeah. The Bible says you carry your cross daily. Yeah, daily. Right. He didn't say nothing about you decreasing. Yeah, no, no. He didn't say nothing about me increasing. No, no. He just said you carry your cross daily. daily. And because you carry your cross daily, it's a lifetime activity yeah. of walking with God. Yeah. You don't with God for 30 years, stop and sit down and say, I done did all I could do. It's a lifetime that you walk with God. You know, you know I, I, I love Bishop, you know, because 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 Bishop and I feel well all the time. But when he got a little bit of strength in him, he'll come in and tell you in a heartbeat. He'll sing a song. He'll give you a testimony. And then he said, you know what? The Lord still got work for me to do. I think Bishop's the oldest one in the church. And he's still on the battlefield for the Lord. For, for, for some of us, we need to know that. Yeah. We need to know it ain't just about coming in and sitting down. Right. We need to know that it is about giving God some praise wow. for all that he's been doing for us. Yeah. He said, follow, 
Follow me. Follow Take me. up your cross daily. Yes. Because you don't know what's going to happen to you on that particular day. And because you don't know what's going to happen to you on that particular day. Oh, see, 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 see. I, I learned the secret. Right there. I get up in the morning uh -huh. and I can hear less how my day is going to go. I turn right around and say, This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And no matter what goes on, I will rejoice. And I would be glad in it. Yeah, I can right. care less what's yeah. happening because I know that God is in control yeah. of my day. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, so, so when I put on my cross, I put on my armor, yeah. I'm ready to go to battle. Yeah. That even as I go into battle, I'm putting God before me. Yeah. That even as I put God before me, He said, like, I will go and make a way yeah. out of no way. Yeah. I, I will take your enemies. Oh, God. <laughs> Y'all, y'all don't know. Y'all, 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 y'all don't know. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. We hope that you truly enjoyed whatever you might have seen or heard. And we ask so that you, if you're ever in the Middletown area, that you would stop by and come visit us. Or either that, send us an email, send us a letter. I have heard from some of you already of some of your requests. And you, we will pray with you and along with you. Um, at this time, I just want to go into a brief moment of prayer. Gracious Father, Lord, as we come before you, God, we come thanking and praising you for another day another hour. We thank you, O oh Father God, for those who are watching this broadcast today. We ask, O oh Lord God, you continue to touch those. There might be somebody who is sick and shut in today, God. We ask that you will bless them, O oh God. Give them the strength, O oh Lord God, of what they need, O oh Father. Father, somebody's thinking about suicide, O oh God. We ask, O oh Lord God, that you intervene with that, O oh Father God, that they don't commit suicide, O oh Father. Somebody's thinking about getting high. Somebody's thinking about taking a drug, O oh Father God. Somebody's in a state of depression today, God, that even even as they're in a state of depression, oh Lord God, they need you, oh Father, to help lift them out of that state of depression. We ask you now, God, to step in the midst, oh God. Send a word, oh Father God, that somebody will get pulled out. Somebody will get help, oh Lord God. Somebody will be delivered, oh God. Father, have your way this day, oh God. And God, we continue to give your name all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for watching our program today. If you're ever in the Middletown area, please stop by to visit us. Uh, Sunday school starts right at 9.30. We do have an anointed teacher who teaches Sunday school. And then we move right into our worship service, which starts at 11. Please come out, be a part. There's some information that'll be on your screen that if you need a ride, give the church a call. We'd be more than willing to come by and pick you up. I thank you for your emails. I thank you for your letters. I thank you for your phone calls. And if, please continue to call us, continue to send emails to us. We will pray with you and we will pray for you. Thank you. Have a blessed day.